Perfect place for now, actually. Stations 1 in Slum and Love on Drakensberg Drive, about halfway between Central Road Junction and Gorry Pen. Slowly mobile, sort of northeast, northish. So look forward. Very excited. Once again, I saw another young one in there. Tiny little one. Central Road Junction and Gwari Pan um, on Drakensberg Drive. How are you? Bit of a very mild inquisitiveness there towards us. Not too worried, you can see. Also notice the big female coming closer to us and the youngster just moving behind us. So she's just looking after them as well. Hello. Coming closer to us a little bit. Quite curious. There might be more elephants further in. This doesn't strike me as the matriarch, unless they've maybe separated from a larger part of the group. This is a beautiful female. Now she's testing us, seeing what we're about. You can see she was walking casually and then tries to give us a fright by just suddenly turning. But doing it so mild that I can really tell you she's more interested in just relaxing than uh, really being bothered about seeing what we're about. She can sense it. <laughs> Another one behind us here as well. It's getting tricky to know where to look. For a second day when I saw all these small elephants, I was hoping that maybe this is part of a large herd that has that female with a curved tusk. <laughs> See there again. <laughs> now if you notice what she's doing, she's pretending to not notice and then suddenly she turns. So it's purely just trying to sort of initiate some response from us. Obviously the fact that she can hear the vehicles, sort of the buzz coming from it as well as my voice shows that we are alive and she's fully aware of that. But... Um, she can also see quite quickly that we're not here to, to hassle them or harm them. And that's what we want. Let's move a little bit. Now the rest of the herd is very relaxed. The fact that all those little ones haven't been sort of called back together or with their mums shows us that the whole herd is comfortable with she might come and give us a head shake now because now we're interacting a little bit. Now I'm moving closer to them. It's okay. Yeah, look at that beautiful glint in her eye. Slightly again. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, look at that on the left here. They were going to come out here by us. They're just taking a slightly roundabout route. Just look at the dynamics of this herd at the moment. How are they moving along the edge of the road? Here's a little one. Hey! I'm not to go on about it, but uh, well heard, huh? Eh? 
Marco literally heard these elephants earlier, that's why we can sit with them now. We would have missed them otherwise. Forward again. Lots of drongos now. We've had as many as eight to nine drongos following a single bull around. You can imagine the whole herd of elephants. There's a whole uh, group of drongos moving around. It's also interesting from a behavioral point of view. Let's have a look at this little guy close by. See elephants in the background there. It's a drongos, to my knowledge, and I could be slightly wrong, but as far as I know, they are territorial birds. You certainly see territorial behavior. But it also shows you that when they're around these big animals, the drongos have learned over time that listen, if there's enough of these animals moving around, we can, we're all going to get more food than we are if we just stick to our territories. So, interesting little thing to think about maybe. Maybe one day down the line when we become smarter as, as humans, we'll reevaluate the term bird brain. Always looking around, just look at how much just go a little forward. Eh? Marco. Oh, there we are. The elephant's turning for us. <laughs> but if you notice while these drongos are sitting down, they're constantly looking around all the time. Oh, let's just look at that. Look at that. There's one of the youngsters. Hey! Oh, great. Curious. This is now looking at us, wondering what we're doing. If they were upset or bothered or uncomfortable, that youngster back there that's standing towards the sunset would have uh, by now certainly been closer to the adults. Hey, beautiful. Look at that. Look at the little one. Look at the behavior of the little one. Learning from mum. Foot posture up. But the little one is not stressed. It can sense the adults aren't worried about it, so that's why it's a bit confused. It's like, I don't really see the need to have high head posture. The sun's just going to dip away. Hard to look at him. Okay, have a quick glimpse at that sun. Oh, literally just a quick view. There's an elephant actually in that bush as well underneath there. And the sun is going to blink away in the next few seconds. Mark, I'm just apologizing because I know that I'm sort of I'm a bit like this and you can only <laughs> you can only go so many places with a camera. Look at that, we're gonna get closer to them again just now. Hey young mister. So curious. He's a teenager. He's, he's still a couple of years away from, from leaving the herd. But already he's also at that stage now where he wants to be independent. He was being brave now. And I think it was almost the decided point he was making. The fact that he was on the other side from us relative to the herd. So he was starting to show them a bit of independence. Telling them, listen, I'm becoming a big boy. And of course, somewhere over the next few years, two, three years from now, probably four years maybe, he'll start moving off and join the, the male society if he wants of elephants. Breeding herds like this, they are led by very normally the oldest female in the group, the astute matriarch is always literally the, the center of this group. I haven't even seen her yet. I think she's still down there. I dare to hope that it might be that female with a curved tusk, which if we do get to see her, it will be time to, to find a name for her been able to come up with a good one yet. Let's see she pops out. Those of you that's with us, see what comes in. Let's follow. Sydney, how are you? 